I got a little unprofessional last time, so maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe things can get a little bit uh, more online this time. And, of course, we brought along a combat veteran buddy of mine, Mad Mardigan, who saw your film, loved the film, mm -hmm. and has a favorite moment in the film. You want to share that favorite moment, Mad Mardigan? Oh, thanks for putting me on the spot. I'm not uh, – was it oh, the cheese tortellini? It's the, the cheese tortellini <laughs> line just really – Overall, it was the spit bottles. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but just seeing everyone if I, dipping. If you're in the military, you know what they are for dipping. Yeah, dip. it just yeah. rings so true. You know, before that, the most you've ever seen is in uh, Black Hawk Down. Uh, Josh Hartnett like taps his can of Copenhagen, and other than that, that's pretty much all the use of Copenhagen. But like, I love that you, you, you were true to the smoking and the dipping because that yeah. is what it was like. Yeah, and, and we and and we. Um, we're scared we get some shit for that because you know people don't like seeing smoking and movies yeah. and because we're setting bad examples but that's not the point of this film it's uh, the point of this film is to be authentic and uh, we just had the most unbelievable um crew on our movie my experts were military people i hired a shit ton of uh of afghan of afghanistan and iraq war veterans um including people that were at this uh, outpost mm -hmm. uh, combat outpost and people that were in that battle and um, they, you know, and they helped, they, they brought their own shit with them, you know, their own spit bottles, their own yep. you know, piss bottles, you know, and, you know, I, it, I, we really tried to be authentic. So thank you for that. Yeah, no. And it comes across because like, I, I don't want to go on a tangent, but like the hurt locker bothers mm -hmm. me to such a degree. Like I can't get 10 minutes through that. And, um, the last time I tried to watch it was like a few months ago, I gave up 10 minutes and I'm like, who, who was the the um advisor to this and i and i looked it up and he had to actually respond because everybody was saying this is not what we do whatsoever and he was like his his thing was that well they couldn't keep it accurate because they had a story to tell so they they sacrificed <laughs> it being <laughs> anywhere near realistic or familiar just so that they can tell the story they wanted to well i you know look, I, I think i personally i think as a piece of cinema the hurt locker is uh, is really masterful and i Really cannot speak to the authenticity of it, but what I can uh, uh, what I can tell you a, is I thought Kathy Bigelow is a great director and absolutely acting, and, and I have nothing negative to say about that movie at all. But what I will say is that for the outpost, I mean, the, the, we had we always have fights with the studio about mm -hmm. authenticity, um, and th that wouldn't that's not just Millennium. That's any studio that that you go to. Because authenticity often gets in the way of schedule and gets in the way of budget. I know I have to have this. I have to have that where we can settle for this or we can settle for that and just move the process of making the movie along. But, uh, you know, we were really fucking hardcore, um, including the uniforms that we wore, the weapons that, uh, that, that, that we were given. When we began off the film, we were told uh, we had easier access to a certain kind of weapon than the ones uh, that... Uh, we used them in the film, and and you know even in when we went into the sound design of the, of the movie, we were so specific that it had to be the sound of that weapon, you know, firing. Uh, yeah. As because we could have gotten, you might have noticed if you were really listening, Matt, but most people wouldn't notice and wouldn't give a fuck. But you know, it, it really was our goal, Matt. It, I well, swear. You, you knocked. I mean, you knocked it out of the park. And like the two forty Bravo, every gun sounded just. The way it's supposed to um, seem like nobody wanted to keep their Kevlar on their head sometimes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we had, I'll tell you that just to give them a shout out that the two military experts that we had that were in charge of it were um, a guy named uh, Jericho Demon and a guy named Ray mm -hmm. Mendoza, who are like just brilliant at this. And they were super hardcore on our ass about this. And they're scary dudes. So we listened, you know, and but then we actually had people that were in the battle that were not going to tolerate any anything that was inauthentic. What we're really going for, Matt, and the reason why I think the movie was so successful in terms of the amount of people that saw it is I think we had a shit ton of vets who saw the film and then got their families, their girlfriends, their, their kids, their parents, and said, this is what it was. Because they don't want to talk about it, but we'll show you. This is what it was. Yeah. And sure. I, I think that I think that helped us um, a great deal. And, I, and I'm a veteran myself, as you know. Absolutely. I'm not a combat veteran. I, I'm not going to credit grab there at all. But uh, and maybe because I was not a combat vet, 
um, not through any fault of my own. I just wasn't in the military at the time we were at war. But I, I sort of feel guilty about that sometimes. And like when I go to my reunions at West Point, some of my classmates have, have, have were like you, Matt. They've, they've been in battle. The bullets have gone over their heads. They've killed people. They've, they've seen their friends die. And, and, and I haven't. And so I guess I did what I could, which is make a movie that, that sort of honors them. It, can I ask? Sorry. No, I was gonna say like no, you you really did, and I think what it you not having that combat experience really serves you well, like by being able to bring people in that have, mm -hmm. rather than just you know what I mean, like having yeah. it laser focus on your experience, like what you did, right? But like mm -hmm. you were able to just bring in multiple voices, and and it I just was, really, yeah. just really molded, it just really it built something very beautiful and like very. Well, thank great. you. And, and, but there there was something else which was kind of interesting, which is. The army that when I was an army officer, um, it's different than the army of, of today, including the language that, mm -hmm. that they speak, the way that they speak. Um, you know, like I noticed, for example, and this may be small, maybe something that you wouldn't even notice because you were you were in the thick of it, Matt. But you know, they kept referring to the bad guys as dudes. I shot that dude. You know, that dude, that dude over there. You know, and. Uh, we never spoke, I never heard that word when I was in the military, but it, it's like ubiquitous now. And mm -hmm. so we put it into the movie because um, the, the people that wrote the movie are not soldiers, never have been. And then I went in and I did my rewrite and I was a soldier, but not a soldier of today. And then I brought in a guy named Hank Hughes to help me rewrite, who was actually a lieutenant at Combat Outpost Keating, and he contributed a great deal. And so by the end, we, we had it down pretty well. Uh, last uh, thing, and I'm going to be done. I know I'm kind of hogging, but last thing. Yeah, you're when, hogging the show, yeah, buddy. Sorry. Oh, okay. Last so thing. There's other people last here. Thing. It's a panel. <laughs> last thing. Look, at the very beginning, when they walk into the barracks, right, and oh. one of them goes, whore, and then oh, the wow. guy's like, yeah, with a whore. Like, and actually, like, perfect, because we hated, we hated it when people said it. Yeah. So yeah, for yeah, the when season, you're in a permanent party, way, nobody does that. No. Yeah, well, it, you see, when I was in the Army, we all did that, you know? Yeah. Like, wow, you know, and, oh, they they want us to. We just oh yeah, they wanted it, and we're like, uh, no. <laughs>